Chair, once more, I want to agree with you that <coughs> leaders have been changing positions. You become a senator, and sometimes you are governor, a member of the National Assembly, in the executive, like I found myself. Tomorrow I may be a governor, I may come back to parliament. And I think what should guide us is not where we are. What should guide us is the constitution and the interests of the people. So if we are guided with that, then it doesn't matter where we find ourselves. Now, to address the questions, starting with the one that you raised, um, whether, and you have rightly pointed out that your initial figure was 450 billion, the negotiation brought it down to 400 billion. And then you clearly talked about some um, uh, some expenditures that are non-discretionary also at the counties. And I want to make it clear that I'm not saying that non-discretionary expenditures are only at the national government. Even at the counties, there are non-discretionary expenditures, and I agree with you. Payment of salaries are non-discretionary unless you retrench. Um, there are payments to doctors, there are CBS, which, uh, which had been agreed on. But what I'm saying... Uh, uh, what, what I see is, pull the mic closer to you, please. What, what I'm saying, the, the, the point I'm trying to bring out is that at both levels, we have non-discretionary expenditures, national and county. What we may need to do is both levels, again, should cut on discretionary expenditures. And so as national government, and that is why the national government is bearing the biggest share actually 93 uh, percent, uh, 0.6, and the uh, counties is bearing 6.3 percent. Uh, we are alive to the fact that counties don't have the capacity or resilience that the national government would have uh, to absorb some of these cuts. And that is why you find that our proposal is to have a lesser cut at the counties and a higher cut at the national government. So just the same way we went for some of the expenditures at the national government to be cut at 50%, like hostility, like traveling, ETC. You'll also agree with me, Madam Chair, that counties are also traveling, that there are also recurrent expenditures of hostility at the counties. How I wish that we agree that counties must also, as we cut these expenditures at the national government level, then we also maintain and retain, and the county assemblies should do that, that all the non-discretionary expenditures must still be maintained, because you can't change them, but go for the wastages also at the county in terms of uh, certain budget lines that can be cut. Because we, we, are, we live in this country, we see members of county assembly all over the place, also the same as members of national assembly and in the Senate, uh, we also see county executives traveling across the globe the same way as executive. So as we rain on the executive of the national government to cut on these discretionary expenditures, I would do our proposal as treasury is that the counties must also be asked to cut on these expenditures. On the delay of disbursement of funds, again, I want to agree with you and say that this is causing a strain the county governments, they go borrowing very expensive bank loans, and I am not supporting that uh, trajectory. The current predicament, or what we have found ourselves into, maybe it is not the subject of discussion today, but we are alive to it, is that we are not yet done with the legal framework, the legal framework to be able to transfer funds to the county. I will tell you, and I tell this committee, that I have already written, because I initially had a clear mind based on the uh, provisions of the PFM regulations that we could pay up to 50%. Uh, but then there are, is another school of thought that that cannot happen. And that I had to ask for Attorney General's opinion, which later went to the Attorney General on Wednesday last week. It doesn't help Treasury to accumulate and disbursed funds to the counties. It puts unnecessary pressure and strain on us. So I want to just be very clear that 
it is not in the interest of the national treasury not to disburse funds to the county, or as at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, now, the issues that um, Honorable uh, Senator Eddy raised. Yes, counties don't have as much flexibility as national government in terms of re raising revenue. And I think that is one of the reasons why we made provisions in law that money that has already been shared to the counties should not be reduced in terms of transfer in the event that there is a shortfall in revenue collection. But again, Article 219, my understanding of Article 219, it, 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 it deals with the transfer of funds. It doesn't deal with the legislation. It doesn't deal with the bills. What this article simply says is that once a budget is passed, once the Division of Revenue Act is passed, the national government must transfer all the rev shareable revenue to the county that the same legislative organ cannot change the to me i have not seen in this constitution and i have interacted with this constitution a lot i do know that you cannot take away the legislative of parliament parliament can decide to amend and by the way i want to be very clear here the 400 billion was based on a projected revenue of 2.9 trillion. The revenue now is 2.6 trillion. So you cannot base the shareable revenue of the county to 2.9 trillion when you are dealing with 2.6 trillion. And therefore the House can decide on its wisdom, the both houses can decide either to agree to amend downwards the Division of Revenue Act, or the houses, the two houses can reject, in which case then 400 billion will be the amount. But the moment Senate and National Assembly amends the share of revenue, it becomes a law. So that Article 219 would not be violated. That article would only be violated if National Treasury fails to transfer the money that Parliament in its entirety, the two houses, have approves, approved. And I think Honorable uh, Ed also raised the same issue um, that of uh, the non-discretionary uh, lines in the county expenditures. And I think I addressed that. Honorable, uh, the majority in the Senate, uh, my friend, you have um, a, de a decision and that we don't have power, which is true, to amend and that the courts will declare whatever we come up with as illegal and maybe unconstitutional. Yes, it is true that when the president declined to assent to the finance bill of 2024, he indicated under bullet number five, uh, I don't think you have this, uh, this memorandum from the president. Although the president is also part of the legislative process, uh, we, in our own wisdom, we made the president part of our legislative process, including uh, on budget matters. But the president said, this is what he said, that Father, I have directed the National Treasury, and I underline the word direct, and I'm asking, who is he directing? He is actually directing the National Treasury, because I would have had a problem if he directed the National Assembly of the Senate, Parliament. But directing National Treasury is perfectly within uh, his powers as the President to immediately submit to Parliament. And the direction of the directive was to submit to Parliament amendments to the Division of Revenue Act 2024. And that is exactly what we have done. Any, ex any share of revenue to counties, what we have done is to submit a power to do so, and that organ is parliament. Revenue, 
to reflect the reduced revenues occasioned by the rejected finance bill. So the president was actually directing my office to submit to parliament legislative proposal to amend the law. And that is what we have done. So I don't think we have done anything illegal and unconstitutional to that effect. Parliament has all the powers to deal with this matter. Um, the Honorable Boni, uh, Senator Boni, you have uh, talked about my pet as your number two issue, and uh, that is the revenue leakages. Uh, as a matter of fact, we will not be here today if we um, if we mainstream in our financial system. I can't agree with you more. It is not just about the revenue collection, it is even the revenue use. And at both levels of government, national and county. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm addressing Senator Boni Adwale, whom I know very well, is passionate about, um, about proper use of public funds. I absolutely agree, and that is why today I signed off 560 million funds to procure, to help us procure the system that would help us to do E to E procurement beginning January. Because we have been procrastinating and pushing forward this in almost eternity. It must come to a stop. We must do it. Then on the issue of carry. I again have pronounced myself, the President has pronounced himself on reforms at KRA. The first institutions that I held a meeting with immediately after my swearing in was KRA. And we are in the process of coming up with a, a, pro, a, a system. Uh, the, pro, the system that we have at KRA is over 10 years old. So we must modernize, we must come up with a new system, a new system to collect our taxes and we must also talk to KRA staff to change the mindset. Uh, let me move a little quickly. Again, here there is the non-discretionary expenditure um, uh, which have been occasioned by changes in government policies. That, that is true, but I think this is a, 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 a big and wider issue to be dealt with. Uh, some of the decisions that we take, and that is why uh, under my leadership at the Treasury, I want predictable tax regime. I don't want us to come up with many, I mean, changes in tax policies almost every day. Because I think that is what has occasioned largely some of the uh, non-discretionary expenditures that we are encountering in the counties. And even at the national government level, by the way. So I mean, we need to keep our policies predictable so that we can avoid unnecessary um, disturbance and um, let me call it internal shocks to our economy. Why is it so easy to slash funds for the county government and not NGCDF? Uh, uh, Senator Boni and the committee, maybe for your information, we as Treasury proposed to reduce NGCDF, but do we have power to pass the appropriations uh, bill, no. It is passed at the National Assembly. So that is my answer to that. What is my view about NGCDF in the light of court declaring it unconstitutional? With all due respect uh, to the committee, I would request that I don't give my opinion on this because I'm told this judgment is coming. There's a judgment coming this week. So allow the judiciary to deal with it, uh, Senator Boni, if, I, if you don't mind. Uh, I don't want to get, enter into some territories that uh, I may be accused of other, of other things. What do, they, what do we call it? Uh, where you get into the space of the judiciary? Subjudice, yes. Um, Honorable Nyonka, I think that's a very strong opinion. 
And I understand it. Yeah. You know, the people of KC elected him to protect money, especially money going to counties, that we shouldn't cut it. The only way, place where I don't agree with him is that way of money. I think this is a language that we must debunk. We don't have money in this country to run our, uh, to meet our expenditure effectively. What we must do is to make sure that the money that we, we get more. So we will get more, A, by collecting more, B, by using what we have prudently, and three, cutting on expenditure. So as it is, if you look at our budget figures, we don't have money. We don't have that money. And I've just demonstrated. We actually have been living a lie as a country. We are borrowing money to meet our recurrent expenditure. By the way, I didn't tell this committee that our recurrent expenditure at the national government level is 400 billion per year. So that money, that expenditure is met from the borrowed funds, a lot of which is at very high interest rates, 18% for domestic borrowing. So we must, and even the commercial debt outside there, we borrowed Eurobond just the other day to, pour, to pay another Eurobond at 11% interest rate. So these are things that we must stop. And the best way to stop it is to accept fiscal consolidation and also to accept expenditure. And accept it when that cut is somewhere else. Even when the cut is affecting us, we should accept. Parliament, executive, judiciary, and the counties. All of us must agree and accept uh, a cut. Uh, I've been asked by the ch substantive chair to internalize, and I think the chair, uh, the, the session chair, you also. If you noticed, I don't know whether I betrayed myself, but I was very, very attentive when each member was speaking, mm -hmm. and I was trying to internalize. And by the way, I am completely in agreement. If we had more money, we should give counties even more than 400 billion. The only thing I'm saying is that the present economic situation does not allow us to live normally. We must live normally by cutting our clothes according to our sizes. Each one of us must tighten our belts. And then uh, the substantive chair also said that um, I am indicating that, 20, that money going to the counties is 24, 24.2%, that that is 15% based on projected revenue. But I think the substantive chair is, is not talking about what is in the Constitution. He's not quoting the Constitution. The Constitution, the people of Kenya in their own wisdom, decided to peg the 15% to the last audited accounts. So if I go by the constitution, it is 24.2%. And I even had some used the, the last revenue collection of 2023-24, it is still 16.6%. .6%. But if you now base it on projected revenue, which is a projection anyway, then it, it comes to 14.4%, which is below 15%. But that is the Constitution. How do, we expect the, how do we expect the county government to deal with these expenditures? I think that, again, I have addressed. Finally, the issue of equalization fund has come up. And I'm in agreement that or if with the approval of parliament then would be extended for a further period. But then from 2014 when the, this fund became active, that should have been operationalized, it faced a number of challenges that Treasury, first there were claims that there is no legal framework, then Treasury uh, was maybe not supportive of this. I was a member of the National Assembly during this period and we kept on asking this question in the budget committee and even on the floor of the house. But then where we are is that a lot of this, many of these financial years, there was no appropriation. So as we speak, 
financial years. There is a thing about 10 billion. I may need to get the figures. I presented the same to IBEC the other day. There's about 10 billion amount of thereabouts. Disbursed. Uh, about 12 billion has been disbursed to the fund. Yeah. 12.4 has been disbursed to the fund. There's uh, an amount that has not been disbursed. That is why what we have now released 147 million. You are asking me, Chair, where this 147? It's just a to to be put to be added uh, to demonstrate. I would say that we are alive to the fact that people pay their arrears. But at that rate, I would agree with you. We may not complete clear the arrears. But I we went to IBEC. I made a commitment to IBEC. I didn't foresee this, so I didn't carry uh, my uh, commitment to IBEC. I think we agreed to settle it in three years, if I'm not wrong. I think it was, it was the four years. It was four years. So we, we, we are supposed to clear the, that arrears. So the 147, it calculation to it. I think it was meant to round off from 7.8 billion. Uh, we 7.87, I think, to 8 billion. Because what should have been provided in this year was 7.87 billion. Scientific method through which we have. Um, so, so I was not putting it, Honorable Eddie, uh, that 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 I was showing magnanimity from Treasury. This is a constitutional requirement. So when we do it, it's not something that we are. Uh, doing to demonstrate that we are doing something unusual or or we are being uh, uh, generous to the counties. No. Well, we have just tabulated the share of revenue, the county equitable share that is going to the counties, and we have indicated where the, we have the total share of revenue, we have indicated, we have put the national government, we have put equalization fund. This was just for information purposes, at, uh, for disclosure. It was not meant really to persuade this committee that that is the main reason why they should accept the reduction of 20 uh, billion. So I think um, I'll stop there, Chair. I don't know whether there's anything that I've left out and attended to. Thank you. Uh, just a bit. I wanted to give it uh, to Chair uh, Senator Ali Roba.